good appropriate time of the day to you. I am Richard, and this is LMTD TM FFR, or say it with me now, limited time offer, no vowels. Yay! Here we are again. It's time to continue going through all the broken sorts. So we're doing number four here, as you can see, and we've only just begun. Did our Sunday stream, and now we need to pick up from the New York Hotel where we're searching for clues. And I couldn't find any of them. Oh, well, that's not true. I mean, I found a pen, and then there's this Cuban cigar over here, but I can't really do anything with it other than look at it. And let's just. It's just going to say, ooh, Cuban cigar, right? The ashtray. The ashtray? No, I want to look at the... The ashtray. Hmm. I wanted to look at the actual cigar. Is it... A must be in the right place for clicking deal? The ashtray. No. Alright, okay. I guess I have triggered the opening line for it. About that Cuban cigar. The safe is empty, apart from that final thing down at the bottom, which doesn't appear to be anything. Totally empty, apart from the dust. That dust forming that thing there is weird. Alright, so we picked up the pen from over here. Let's have a look. There we are, pen from hotel room. It's the pen with a black cat logo on it. A black cat logo. That is great. Uh, one second. Yeah, okay. Onwards. Alright. I don't see anything else in this room to interact with. There's nothing over here. We have our bathroom. Which, you know... Despite being a crummy hotel, I mean, it's not the worst bathroom I've ever seen in the world. I mean, I'd like a mirror, but hey, I can't have everything. Why are there two bins? And look, over the right way. Huzzah for toilet paper. Alright, out we go. Alright, and over here in this... There's a thing behind the door, but it doesn't look like it. Alright, let's just talk to Anna Maria. Anna Maria? Anna Maria? Yes, yes I got the me. name right. Amazing, I remembered. Hmm, okay. Nothing new to talk to her about then. Did I try showing her that? That's not quite right. No? What about the pen? Using that won't work. Alright, okay. Um, let's have a look at the PDA and see if that tells me anything. That script was taken by the Greens, Anna Maria is very upset. I promise I'll get it back. Just need to find out who these guys are. Okay. Nothing to connect to. Alright. There's somebody in the closet outside, isn't there? Alright, let's go take a look at that and see if we can communicate with them if they've got a snazzy, funky phone sort of thing that we can connect to them with, you know, and send messages that way. You got anything? No. You got anything? <laughs> I'm in the hall just in the way. Not really. I better get on it. Okay. Bye. All right. Right. I'm trying to use this door. Yeah. I know. I know. Keep away from the door. You're learning fast, boy. No, I'm obviously not because I've done it several times now. All right. Look at the door. It's the door to the cleaner's closet. There's a knocking coming from behind the door. Because the receptionist is back there. 
a simple numeric keypad by the cleaner's closet. The number of combinations must be immense. There's no point in guessing. How can I get the code for the door? I guess the receptionist knows it, or possibly... Let's go downstairs and talk to the guy. Let's see if he'll give it to me. Which I think he won't. But hey. Oh, and I need to do the stupid door opening thing. Come on. Hey, buddy. I stole your lighter. Mr. Alfonso, can you spare a moment? If you make it quick. Uh, no. Well, let's see. About a room. Exactly what part of no do you not understand? I guess it would be the part where I continually ask you the same question again and again. Um. Hmm. Alright, there's only this person over here. Let's talk to them and see if they happen to know the code. Hello again. Um, can you spare a moment? No. Nope. I think I did all of this last time as well, didn't I? Alright, well then. Let's go back to the door and see how we can interact with the door. I mean, I would do the classic newspaper pen key trick, but that doesn't make any sense because there's somebody inside there. And if they had the key... They could unlock the door themselves. So it's got to be locked from the outside. So... I mean, I would speak to the door, but I guess they're gagged in there or something? Oh! Oh! Can they write? Can I give you a pen? Maybe this pen will help them out. Pen is great, but they're gonna need paper as well. <laughs> All right, okay. And well, that just... Wow, that animation. It just got sucked through the door. Um, I guess the New York Flyer. And how is Maybe this not interacting in with it? Out the code. Yeah, exactly. I can hear shuffling noises. And there's the pen and the flyer. Nice. We got something. Pick it up. There's a number scribbled on the flyer. 5837X. X. Okay, we got the pen back. It's the flyer for the lousy New York Hotel. Scribbled on the top is the number for the hotel cleaning cupboard. 5837X. Well, if nobody takes this away from me, I'm going to be trading that information to lots of people. So that the they can come here. on the flyer is my best bet. Yeah. Here goes nothing. Wow, George, that animation. Couldn't you have said something? My God, are you okay? I am now. Thank you. Um... Hey, call me George. What happened? One minute. I'm looking for some cleaner. Next thing I know, I'm being bundled in here and it all goes dark. Did you get a good look at the guy who did it? It sounds crazy, but... He looked just like Elvis. Uh-huh. Go on. He also had a tattoo. A tattoo of a snake wrapped around an immense... Don't mind me. That's him! You won't get away this time, punk! Huh. Okay, Anna Maria. The goons are gone, but the cops will be here soon. We better get out of here. But where are we gonna go? To see a friend about your manuscript. Going to France? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, okay. Hello. I mean, how did she get herself tied up if she was pushed into the closet? Hey, glad you could stop by, George. If you see anything that hasn't been smashed, help yourself. Finish the place off, huh? Better still, torch it. Raise it to the ground. Virgil, you're upset. I can see that. That's why I went into business with you, partner. That amazing detective <laughs> bling. Yeah. We get insurance, don't we? You let it lapse, remember? Ah. Uh, so, uh, what's with the gizmo? This 
This is my MP3 player, man. Woo. What's left of it? The greatest soul and R&B collection ever smashed, destroyed by your pals. How am I gonna work without the sounds of Maggie J. Blind, huh? How am I gonna sleep without the greatest hits of Barry Brown, the hippo of love? How am I gonna sing in my shower without my dose of Malteser? These are rhetorical questions, I guess, right, Virgil? No, copyright names, or not quite. Questions, man. I can buy you another. No, you can't. Last shipment came into the city. Somebody stole them all. It'll be months before the next one. Damn. We lived like savages. Whine about his player. In the days before online shopping. All right. Well, let's have a look around my office now. Oh. Wow, and I wonder why didn't we ensure this phasing in and out of reality book? That would be great. Okay, well that's the door. Let's look at the door. The door to the street. Where do I go next? Oh, I actually get ideas. I don't want to go to any of these. I don't know my landmarks. I'm guessing one of those is the Empire State Building. No, wait, because we're not in... No, we are in New York. This is the Statue of Liberty. Hmm, alright, we'll stay here right now. No, there's more I want to do. Exactly, that's why I said stay here. No, nobody on there that we can look at? Alright, well let's look around the office and see if we can smash anything. Uh, a telephone? Hmm. Hey, can you connect to anything in this office? No, there's no um, servers up that we could pull, not even from like the MP3 player. Oh, I can talk to you, alright, but I can look at you as well. Virgil, my partner at the bail bonds. Virgil's a tough guy alright. Ex-military and that sure comes in handy. He looks pretty mad about something. Whatever could it be? I can't work it out because I am just dumb, dumb George. Why are you sitting on the floor and not on the sofa? I guess, I don't know, maybe closer. Let's talk about Virgil, it. Virgil, please. 40 gig of music, George. 40 gig. That's four weeks non-stop listening. Now all I got is the Country Classic channel on your radio. But Country Classics is great. Thin ice, George. Thin ice. <laughs> Alright, okay. Um, do I need to buy you a new MP3 player? I've got to look at the PDA, PDA and see if it says... Alright. I don't know. I guess so. I don't know why I'm here. Is George... Sorry, is Virgil great with manuscripts or something? Ah, uh, 100 watts of top quality audio heaven. Beats paying the rent any day. I mean, yeah, that's true. It's not smart, but it's true. Can we open this now? Have they moved the thing out of the way? It's jammed on the other side. No, okay, so we can't go back there. Get that open in a hurry. So we're not going back there. Cigarettes. Do you smoke, George? Hmm. A pack of cigarettes. Strange. Virgil so doesn't smoke. I haven't seen Anna Maria smoke, and I don't. Oh. All right. Well, let's pick them up. Hey, Anna Maria. Are these your cigarettes? No. Why? Hmm. Somebody dropped a pack here. I'll take them anyway. May I just provide a lead? Yeah. Let's have a look. A Italian, pack of Italian cigarettes. cigarettes I found in the bail bonds after the attack. I mean, you could use them. Nah, there's no point. Uh huh. And what have we got? They jimmied up in the safe? You got nothing to say about that? No? Okay. Uh, 
I know you lost 40 gigs of music, but how about I give you a pack of cigarettes that you don't smoke? I can close the door. Alright, well, let's talk to... Let's look at... Anna Maria looks less nervous than when we met. I guess she's loosening up. Good. I mean, people Maria, aren't trying to kill her yet. Spare a moment? What do you need, George? I don't know. I mean, let's talk to Virgil and see if it is his pack of cigarettes. Because I'm really not... Oh! That guy, back at the hotel. I might be able to give him the cigarettes. Because I think he was smoking, certainly. But No way am I doing that. No way am I giving cigarettes to another human being. Well, Look, I mean... Virgil, leave well me alone, George. I don't want to talk to you right now. Okay, okay. He sure is taking the loss of his music badly. Yeah, but I can't do anything about that right now. Not unless, you know, if I'm standing right in front of you and I try connecting again? I mean, I don't think that's going to work. No. There is a fault on this line. All right. Smash the office up pretty good. I mean, you can look around. All right, let's try going back to the place then. See if it'll let us do Where that. Do I go next. Anna Maria, you better stay here. You'll be safe with Virgil. I don't know. He lost his music. And then this guy slipped a pen and paper under the door. He looked like him. Well, if it ain't the hero, save the day. Oh, I don't know about save the day, but hey, I'm happy with hero. Listen to me, Sonny. I don't like heroes, which means... Oh, come on. So next time, leave it to the professionals. I'll remember that next time. Oh, okay. So now we can talk to people. Hey there, cop. A beat cop. You can tell from his face he loves his job. Excuse me. Ah, yes, our very own superhero. I'm Officer Halloran, and you are George Stobart. Two B's, two T's. Two B's, two T's. Got it. So, what do you want, Mr. Two B's, two T's? Ah, you the know about the hours? The receptionist. You got any idea who he was? Hmm, medium height, dark hair, and a quiff. Looked a bit like Elvis. Could have been anybody. Did you see any distinguishing marks? Well, there was his tattoo. What did the men want here? Hmm, looks like they were after something in one of the rooms. The safe was opened and empty. We're looking into it now. But I thought. But it's a hint. Yeah. <laughs> oh, George, we have the same the jokes. Same setting. Ouch. Oh, come on. So, what happens next? We put out an APB on the suspect. Then we investigate the illegal use of the fire alarm. Fire alarm? Uh, what happened? Some idiot, that's one D and one T, set off the fire alarm. Wantonly setting off a fire alarm in the city of New York carries a custodial sentence. Ha! Huh. What imbecile would do a thing like that? Really? Does it? Hmm. Anyway, tell, let me tell you, you know, about the tattoo. That guy's tattoo was very unusual. Surprised me. It was a snake with massive fangs wrapped around what looked like... Spit it out, man! Wrapped around... Well, a salami. A salami, you say? Yes, you didn't see it. Salami, I say. Well, that explains everything. Oh yes. Oh yes, a salami means only one thing around here. And what's that? It means there's a deli open. What? Just kidding. It means the Martino gang. Wait till my boss hears this. Well, he knows the Martinos. Been after them for years. Oh well. Thanks All right. For your help. I learned something new. All right, hey there, receptionist. The receptionist looks a little calmer than before. Uh, is that the only thing you notice, George, about people? Hello again. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm much better now. Oh, thanks to you. I thought I was going to be in there for days. Good thinking with the pen and paper. Well, I try. My name is Juanita. I'm George. You've got lovely hands, George. 
such long fingers. Do you play the piano? No, but I can play some pretty good licks on a ukulele. <laughs> I bet you can. Okay, well, I guess you're a worship. All right, let's ask about the man. You got any idea what the guy was after? He was looking for a lady. Said she was staying here. So how did he get past you? He knocked my nail varnish off the counter. He must have followed me when I went to get some cleaner, and then wallop. Ouch. Left quite a bump. You want to feel it? Uh, that's okay. I, I can guess uh, what your bump feels like. <laughs> oh. There we go. You know, what well, I I got nothing to say to that, man. I mean So did you catch the guy who locked you in the closet? I got one good kick in before he ran away. He won't be sitting down in a hurry. Nice. Alright. Uh tell us about your boss as well. How do you work with that man? I've had worse jobs. Alfonso's okay. Just as long as you don't talk to him. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> exactly. Why is he so grumpy all the time? If you've been smoking for 30 years, wouldn't you be grumpy? All right, Juanita. Tell us all about you. Tell you me doing something. all right? Why do you work here? One day, Alfonso will choke on his last cigarette, and this place will be up for grabs. And guess who's going to be doing the grab? Thanks for your help. All right, so now we know the Moreno gang. Martino gang? The gang, whose name I can't remember. We know about them. Hello, Alfonso. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can I book a room now? So how's business, Alfonso? You trying to be funny? What with the fumigation and the fire scare, I'll be lucky if I ever reopen. But you must be insured. That's not the point. This place was in tip-top shape. Getting it back to how it was is gonna take me years. Years of <laughs> neglect, maybe. What? How's the grandfather clock doing now? Yeah? So did your clock survive all the commotion? That's no yeah. dead wood beetles on Never it. did find any beetles on it, though. Ain't that funny. Yeah, they it is strange. Ship when they saw you coming. Because there was yeah, definitely maybe. a dead one on there. Or maybe they were never there. What do you think? I think that's an interesting hypothesis. I mean, you had to guess. I mean, I had to put a dead beetle on there before you would even consider the possibility of beetles on there. So there was at least one beetle on there, even if it was dead. Right, so but it's not there now. Mr. Uh, he panicked and ran off when it all blew up. Didn't even pay the free loan, son of a. Where did it go? Who knows? Zeke just kept shouting, the geese, the geese. Last I saw, he was heading for the city. Are we in the city? Or does that mean something specific for New York? All right. So are you glad you got your receptionist back? <laughs> Lazy, good for nothing. She's lucky she still got a job. But it wasn't her fault she was attacked. <laughs> if I didn't have all this paperwork, she'd be out on her ear. For being attacked? Wow! Thanks for your help. You are a... Alright. Now I'm gonna try and give you Italian cigarettes. Using that won't work. No? Alright. Let's call up the Bow Bonds office and see if we know anything about the... Uh... No, we can't because the phones aren't working there. Alright, let's go back to the Bow Bonds office and ask about the gang. Martino? Marino? Out the door! Where do I want to go next? The only place... Let's go to the Statue of Liberty. No? Can't do that? That is a shame. I wanted to go and do a touristy hey, thing. Hey! Oh, there you are! Virgil! I feel terrible. Virgil? The silent treatment. I hate that. Couldn't pay the voice actor anymore, eh? Anna Maria, can you spare a moment? What do you need, George? No, I can't tell you about the Martino gang. No? 
nothing. Everything. I mean, I would like to find... I would like to find a book telling me about the Martino gang. Yeah? I don't have Gangs of New York book or something I can look at around here. Ah, ah, that's the safe, of course. The one that I can never reach. So is it over here? I mean, this is about as close as I can get. So I can't do anything with that safe. All right. Damn, I... Uh, 101. Right, okay, that's you're just going to tell me the same thing. It's paying the rent any day. I mean, I don't know how I would do anything with that. Can I smash it with the golf glove in order to make it smaller? Using that, I mean, won't work. I know that isn't logic, but hey. If I close the door, huh? What if I look at the door? What if you come with me, Anoria, and I used you on... Can you sing? Can you entertain him with a song? Mm, that won't work here. No, I didn't think so. What if I give you the code. Mm, that won't work uh, I get, no, I can't give you my phone. In all the excitement, someone dropped a pack of Italian cigarettes in my office. Right. Okay, so I didn't miss somewhere that I could look at. Right. Where do I go next? I don't know, George. You said you knew someone who could... I guess we'll stay here. No, there's more I want to do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'd like to tell you about the Martino gang. Where do you think these came from? It's gotta be our friends from earlier. Strange brand. I don't know of anywhere selling Italian branded cigarettes. Right, I know that. I I, I figured that out. Do I have to? Sh oh, why didn't I show them to the cop? That's not such a good idea. Where do I go next? I mean, I wanted to show them Anna to. Anna Maria, you better stay here. You'll be safe with Virgil. Did I just not try combining it with them? All right. Let's just do I've this. I've got no reason to try that. Yes, you do. Excuse me. Yeah. You ever seen this brand before? Where'd you get them? Oh, someone left them where I work at a bail bond agency. Yeah, figures. That's just the kind of place you'd find black market cigarettes. Uh -huh. Black market? That's right. Illegal. They're coming into the city by boat somehow. All courtesy of your friends, the Martinos. Hey, they're not my friends. I believe you. The Martinos only have friends in high places. <laughs> Alright, and... That's not such a good idea. Cheesy pictures of local places I'd never want to visit. Um, okay, so I can't go back upstairs because I don't have the key anymore. I suppose you're hiding in the toilet, are you, Mr. Geese? No. Ah. Not in time. Oh, well. Hold on. Let's actually check over here quickly. Oh. Alright. 
Okay, so now I know the Martinez are involved in black market, black market trading, but I don't know. Can I just ask the cop? Hey, oh, well, what that happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you not want these cigarettes? Smoke them out. Excuse me, Officer O'Halloran. Yes, Mr. Stobart. It's good that you remember it. Oh, okay, so I'd have so to do this as well. Is a member of the Martinos? Correct. And the cigarettes are being smuggled into the city by boat. Correct. So the Martinos have a hangout near the docks. Correct. I should play this more often. They got no factory down on the East River. A legitimate business. Mama Martino's Meatpacking Company. So we can't touch them. Time for a stroll down to the docks, I think. All right, there we go. I learned something. Hi, Juanita. Hi, George. Oh, right. thanks for your help. All right, away we go. As in, run. Where right. do I want to go next? To the docks, I guess. Ah, okay. So it's filled in, so I can see these places. Hopefully, all of these places are, you know, go to Wubble. Martino's Meatpacking Company. Ugh. I mean, I've the really did. could be somewhere inside, but I'm gonna have to get in to find out for sure. Wow! All right, is that just the way out? Is it? Those are some seriously hefty gates. Well, I'd like gates like these if I was a mafia boss. There's more than salamis going on in here. I'm here for Anna Maria's manuscript, and I'm not leaving until I get it back. Oh, all right, okay. Well, if I can't leave here... First of all, we'll take a look. No. We're just taking a look around, okay. Go up there, but we'll go and talk to the man before we do that. We'll scare these pigeons! Yeah, run away! Nice. Oh, there's somebody up there. A person. Even this truck running all this time. That's not very environmentally friendly. Are you kidding me? Are you going to run? No, we're not doing that. Anything fun in this corner to investigate? No. Ooh. Yeah, there's an interesting door. It's the back door to the trade shop. No, let's open it just for the hell of it. It's locked. locked. Oh well. Very wise. You never know who's after your salami these days. It's a joke about Juanita being after George's salami Those here. Those garbage cans look filthy. Although the flies hanging around don't seem to think so. Well, that means it's time for you to open and rummage through them, isn't it? I won't be touching those cans. You picked up half an eaten burger last time. What's changed, man? Without a full protective suit, I won't be touching those cans. All right. Hello, I am here to look at your salami. The display case is full of salamis. I never knew there were so many different types. I mean, once you've made one, why keep inventing more? Different tastes, textures, people like different things. Oh, I can pick up a bloody thing. Oh, I can't look at that. Who are you? An old silver-haired man in charge of the salami counter. Hmm, he looks twitchy, restless. How many times have I seen this at the bail bond company? I don't know. I'm not sure what you're observing there, George. A white butcher's apron with the Martino logo on the front. It's filthy and hardly hygienic. So are they gonna stop you? Hey! Yay! What do you think you're doing? Oh, uh, I thought you might have hidden some more special salamis around here. No, I haven't! You understand? Oh. Sure, whatever you say. I am such Good. a child. I'd hate to have to get serious with you, pal. Uh, nobody 
you look to somebody else getting serious about their salami. Hi there. Hello, sir. My name is Chico Carella, and I run this shop for Mama Martino's Salami Factory. We got a wide range of salamis for your delectation. We got Salami Milano, Salami Di Folino, Salami Ungarese, Salami Bresciola. Yeah, we got so much salami, we got salami coming out our ears. <laughs> Little joke there. Maybe sir is looking for something uh, extra special. How about a 28-year-old vintage salami? Made the way Mama used to make it, huh? Uh, thanks, but no. Spicy foods don't agree with me. You mean... you don't eat salami? Uh, no. Not... ever? Not really. I better get on it. Like... never? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm crazy about salami. I die for salami. I love salami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I love you too. You're a funny guy. Hey, don't I know you? You on TV? Oh, I've just got one of those faces. I never forget a face, you know. Yeah, it'll come to me. <laughs> funny guy. Oh, you're one of the people who was at the place trying to uh, find Anna Maria. Okay, all right. And George, you don't know what you're missing out by not having spicy foods. Mm. All right, yeah. Tell me some more about salami. It'll be great. You have a very wide selection of salamis. That's because Mama Martino, she make a lot of different salami. This one here is made out of boar. Ooh. Was the boar wild? Well, he wasn't too keen on the idea. <laughs> oh, a classic. It's an old gag, but always a good one, huh? Uh, well, tell me more. What makes a Martino salami so special, then? Yeah. The Is it ground up dead? Uh, no. Nox? Rats. Whatever. Recipe. Yeah. Ground up dead snitches. Snitches get put in ditches with stitches, and then made into salami. Um, nope. I've got no rhymes for salami. So, what salami would you recommend for me? I know it the minute you walked in the door, sir. The Martino Vintage. The really the expensive one. Ultra of the salami world. Nice Latin, I'm impressed. You see, the Martino Vintage utilizes only the tenderest meat. Hung and bled for three whole days whilst being constantly beaten. Oh, really? Uh, what do you beat it with? Baseball bats. Anyway, when the meat's ready, the boss himself grinds it up. From one batch, we can make 50 salamis. Each one goes to a different store as a one-off special. This is my only 28-year vintage, and it's going cheap. Wow. To think that salami's been around for 28 years. Ha! Are you crazy? <laughs> 28's the age of the meat when it goes into the salami. Oh, I see. I mean, come on. You are... One. Beating meat is hilariously inappropriate for this. And two, you are really, really making it sound like you found a 28-year-old and you beat him with baseball bats until he died. That, because he snitched on you or was part of a rival gang or something, and then we ground him up into sausage. And then we distributed those sausages far and wide so that nobody could track him to a single place. I mean, spreading the evidence over a wide area is not smart, but hey. Tell me about the apron at the back that is covered in blood. Is that authentic blood? Can I lick some of the blood off of it, please? So, why aren't you wearing your apron? Hygiene. Well, surely the rules say you have to wear an apron. Not one as dirty as this. I need to get it cleaned, but for now, it can stay where it is. Would you like to hear about my exciting golf club? Like golf? Nah, I could never handle the clubs. Every swing, smack, right into the ground. Nothing beats a baseball bat. Really? Well, it, it's never too late to learn. 
Let me present the Stobart Patented Extendable Golf Club. Oh, extendable. It could be useful. Of course, if you're talking portable, it's gotta be the knife every time. Knife? Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, my mistake. That's a nice club. Very nice. Uh, tell me about yourself, man. Do you enjoy the salami business? So how long have you been working Do here? You as long as I remember, this place has been in the family for a long time. Oh, so your relatives own it? <laughs> no, no, no. The family. The family. Oh, I see. Of course, the family. This guy's crazy. What's he talking about? George, if 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 you don't know, then I mean. Lost cause. So, why are you working here in the salami shop? Well, first and foremost, I love salami. And second and second most, if I wasn't here, how could I demonstrate my love of salami to so many people? Now, there's a sentiment you normally hear more often after dark down by the docks. Th that is exactly the sort of thing I was thinking. I was just imagining him going out and flashing his salami at lots of... Uninterested people. You look like a guy who's lived a little. Why not take a holiday? See the world. Retire. Uh, mister, you don't retire from Mama Martino's. Mama Martino's retires you. One day, I wish to work here until I die. And then one day, I too will become a salami. If you don't mind me saying, you seem a little twitchy. Yeah. Hey, hey, uh, on I Twitch. I am a little on I'm in, uh, I'm in need of a cigarette, you see. Ah. Uh, uh, can't you quit? Smoking kills. I've been smoking 30 years. I figured if it was going to kill me, it would have done it when I started. That's a uh, dumb idea. But I got some cigarettes. I could give you, give them to you, and then what happens? Where do you go? Yes, that way then I can steal the apron, and then when I have the apron I can go and see the other person and say, Hey, I'm a member of this thing, I need to get in here. So, let's see if I'm right. I don't suppose you know what make of cigarette this is. I sure do. Those are heavenly breeze, the finest Italian cigarettes you can buy. Interesting branding. My favorite. Very hard to get in this country, if you know what I mean. I yeah, understand I what's difficult to get in this country is. Babies, and you feel like you're up there with the angels. Ah, oh, yes, sir. What do you want for the pack? That bloody apron. <sighs> I really, really want both of those things, but I guess the apron is gonna. Uh, I'll nothing leave it right for now. Thanks. Remember, any time you want to offload those beauties, I'm your man. Alright, I'm going to save it there. Gain entrance to factory. Alright, okay. Hey, I've changed my mind. I want a salami. So you like these cigarettes, huh? I love them. What do you want for the pack? A salami? Right. If I give you this pack of cigarettes, you have to give me... The vintage salami. Vintage for some cigarettes? Yeah. It's an interesting offer. And it's a done deal. There you go. One Martino's classic vintage salami. Thank you. And here's your pack of Italian cigarettes. I bet you're just itching for one of those death sticks right now, huh? You better believe it. But if I leave here and get found out, there'll be hell to pay. I'll have to wait until no one's around. Nice doing business with you. Chico's oh. got what he wants. Now all I have to do is hide, watch, and wait. That was disappointing. I guess it's not about what I get out of it. It's about what I so cause him like to do. Cigarettes, huh? I love them. So let's what try for the pack? trading for the apron. Okay. How about this whole pack of cigarettes for your apron? 
Oh, I can't do that. If I got caught without an apron, it'd be a chop for me. Oh, okay. So I have to take the. All right. You don't need the apron. You're not even wearing it. Rules is rules. I, I have don't to want steal to it. The next Martino's vintage. I was right. Oh my god. You don't need the apron. You're not even wearing it. Rules is rules. I don't want to end up as the next Martino's vintage. All right, salami it is right. then. If I give you this pack of cigarettes, you have to give me the vintage salami. The vintage for some cigarettes? Ah, it's an interesting offer. And it's a done deal. There you go. One Martino's classic vintage salami. Thank you. I didn't and move my hands at all cigarettes. to, you know, pull it out of anywhere, so I've been holding it in my hand all the time. You better believe it. But if I leave here and get found out, there'll be hell to pay. I'll have to wait until no one's around. Nice doing business with you. Chico's got what he wants. Now all I have to do is hide, watch, and wait. I'm just going to pull the salami. I'm just going to examine the salami in my pocket. Don't worry. Salami. <laughs> is that it? Salami. Salami. All right, you're not going to say how it's the vintage 28-year-old salami or anything. No, go out of the door, George. Let's run away over here, and let's go up and see that man. Come on, up there. Oh. No, no, this door right here that you're standing in front of. Look at Oh, my God, what are you doing? Hey, you. I have to examine it from the going? inside. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm the new guy. Where's your apron? I forgot it. Uh, don't worry. I'll get another inside. Oh, no, you won't. No apron, no entry. It's oh, almost like I predicted it. Damn the rules. No getting in without an apron. All right. Now, he's one scary looking guard. See? He doesn't look much like a salami maker. Hi there, I'm George. Hi, teleport. Oh, you ain't nothing to me. Charming. Yeah, well, I ain't here for the small talk. What do you want? Tell me about Martino's, yeah. So where is the famous Mama Martino? When do I get to meet her? Are you crazy? Mama's been gone these past 50 years. <laughs> God rest her soul. Oh, they didn't oh, tell I'm me that at the interview. I'm sorry. So yeah. who runs this place now? The boss, Fingers Martino. Didn't they tell you in the interview? Well, I was just too excited at the time. That explains a lot. Why'd they call him Fingers? Because he's lost them all in the salami business? You know Chico in the trade shop? What's he like? Time we let the old goat go. His memory shot to pieces. Don't say that to him, though. He's got a temper on him bigger than the bulls. But he seems so harmless. Yeah, that's what the last helper said. Then he asked Chico to share a cigarette, and bam! Bam? Bam! A month later, we got a can of dog food returned with the guy's tie in it. Nope. <laughs> Only joking, kid. <laughs> Great gag. Well, we're talking about the salami anyway, so, I mean... Listen, I've got five kids to feed back at the ranch. <laughs> uh -huh. Little Timmy's wasting away. I need this money. And you listen, buddy. No apron, no wake, no pay. Simple. But you're not wearing one. Do you see me carrying a carcass? No. Do you see me rolling a salami? Well, no. Then go figure. You ain't waking until you have that apron. Well. Ah, uh, well. Now you put it like that. Looks like I was right. There must be some way around this apron issue. Here's the way around the issue. I pummel you into the ground like a bug, and you spend the rest of the night in the hospital. You are a man of few words, but those words speak volumes. He's not a man of few words. Me, fella. He's a man of many, lots of words. So many words, he's almost... Yeah! Alright, well, I fell off. That's alright, it wasn't really... Oh no, he came back in. I should have snuck. 
or either that or it was a timing issue. Okay. Come on, I'm pressing control. Control is my snake. Oh no, it's not my snake button because that was the last one. That was under no, console three. I think I successfully snuck around you. Time for a dirty, dirty salami apron. Wearing the apron, I'd be able to move freely about the building. And there's no time like the present. Come on, let's run back in there and say, "Hey, do you like?" You will see that I'm wearing his apron. Yeah, I know. I need to stay away from here unless I want to become the next Martino Vintage. Oh, but I mean, I wanted to tell him that no, I work for you. You gave it to me. Don't you remember? Wow, man, your memory shot. And then get BAM! I think that was another pigeon flying backwards. That one wasn't. Hey! Oh, can I go in here? I can! Oh, pile of ice! There's a pile of ice in one corner of the refrigerated truck. It's beginning to melt. Oh, let me pick it up. I wonder if this is a time limit thing. A lump of ice from the freezer truck. No, that way. Ah, you found your apron then. Sure did. I don't know what that is. Ah, the ice is melting. Awesome. It is a time puzzle. Sure, that is, is no great. Point. It must be. A lump of ice from the freezer truck, and it's melting fast. I'm good with that. Metal shutter for the loading bay. I'll come and get some more in a little bit. Some more ice. There we go. Oh. The lump of ice has nearly melted. Cool. What's going on here? It's a red Just light. Just a metal shutter. Nothing special. But it's got a red light above it. Maybe it's not... Don't go in there, they're developing photos. And the red light means the darkroom light is on. The shutter's locked, but I can hear people on the other side. Oh, okay, just... <laughs> Can't go around there. Ah, and the ice is gone. All right. So we have a limited time to do something with the ice. I could grab some ice and then throw it down your neck. Now let's talk to you. See if you've got anything more to say. Now I'm wearing an apron. You again? What now? Nothing. I just wanted to say hello and thank you for welcoming me into the Martino family with adherence to the rules. You know. I really need that. Let's run away. Oh, an open. Great. No, you're not going to do anything special. Not going to hide in it and be transported to another part of the uh, thing. Oh. Ooh. What are you? A fire resistant blanket attached to the wall. When it comes to fire, safety first is my motto. That's what Grandpa Stobart used to say to me. Shame he never said it to Granny. I mean, I 
fireproof blanket. May come in handy. I mean, you can wrap the ice up and stuff, and that. But I don't know if fire. I guess fireproof blankets are not designed to keep temperatures in. The sign on the door says packing room. I wonder what they could be packing. Salami for sure, but maybe drugs, guns, or even worse. Pirate video games. <laughs> oh, self-aware things. Maybe. No. Locked. Strange noises. Slap. Scream. The sound of sticks being broken. Ooh. Hang on. That sounds like a blowtorch. I don't think this is the room I want right now. Jeez. Alright, there's another door. Where does that go? Just a door. Nothing special. Right, but where does it go? Oh, keys. It's a small bunch of safety keys. Well, let's take them. Now that I have them, I am safe. It's a small bunch of safety keys. I mean, ordinarily, I'd say that the safety keys had to be with somebody who knew how to operate that machine, and they don't give them to anyone. From somewhere, but where? Tell me, I've got to push the barrel to do a thing. Oh, maybe I can push it with you. No, that's not what I mean. Thank you. Ah, all right. So I push this. Still don't know why I want ice. Yeah. All right. So I push this. You're going to do it again, because what you're going to do is you're going to push it onto the forklift. Waste meat. And then oh, the forklift was going to lift disgusting. up, and you're going to use that and as a step. Been opened in weeks. Open it. Open it. Open it. Open it. Open it. Come on. Keep going. Great. So now what you want to do is you want to stay where you are. Wanna use it? No, 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 get down. Stop going up on places. A disused forklift truck. The tires are flat and it's not going anywhere. Well, that's good to know that I've got the right idea. Huh? The forklift truck appears to be dead. No lights, nothing. Time for the safety keys. The safety key fits the lock on the forklift. No, I wanted to pick up the keys. Can I not do that? Now that's up? No, apparently not. So, hop! And hop! And hop! And then, we look in through the wind. We look at that. It's a window. An air vent set high up the oh, wall okay. of the building. Opera? And it's coming from behind that grill. I mean, I didn't expect to solve the uh, 40 gigs worth of music lost here, but hey, maybe. So then the bum tries to tell me it was my boys that screwed up. Huh. Everybody knows my boys are the best. Ain't that right, Mr. Spalacci, sir? So I am told. That's why you hired me. Apparently. Anyway, Tony's got cold feet now. Ain't that right, fellas? That's right, Mr. Fingers, sir. I guess she's gonna be, uh, hanging around a long time before, uh, another job comes his way. Oh you my crack God. me up, Mr. Fingers. You see? Messing with my wife I could deal with, but screwing my business, why, 
That's personal. So, anyhow, Mr. Spalacci, sir, here we are. The manuscript safe and sound. Oh. Filed under F. F for found. Clever, huh? So much better than F for failure, don't you think? Or G for Garot, or H for hanged himself. Huh? It's gonna go under S for funny, salami. Mr. Spalacci, sir. Why, why are you funny. wobbling your head around so much, George? Find a way to get those guys out of there. Oh, was I? Did I interrupt it somehow? I can still see Spalacci and fingers in the office. If I could just get them to leave, I might be able to grab the manuscript. But you'd have to be able to get in there somehow. Can you do it by? Mm, that won't nope. work here. All right. Well, I thought you might be able to do it by putting salami through there. Hmm. What if we set that on fire? That's not such a good idea. All right. What if we try? That's no. not the right approach. A fireproof blanket. No way am I doing that. So let's look inside I can still again, see please. Still see fingers in the office. If I could just get them to leave, I might be able to grab the manuscript. Let's go down. Down. Oh, wow, that was a big drop. Alright, now let's have a look at this door over here, then. Yay! In we go. Hmm? Strange. My favorite aria coming through the walls. But where from? From the room upstairs that you just saw. Also, this door here. It's a first aid box. A first it's not. Aid box attached to the wall. There's nothing in there but a no button one to press. Accuse the Martinos of being sloppy when it comes to first aid. If you'd seen other first aid boxes, that would make sense. Well, well, well. Empty. Apart from an electronic card reader. Do I want to try and short it out with ice water? Or non-ice water? And then just have any sort of card work, like my Bail Bonds card. Is that what we're trying to do here? That's not quite right. Alright, let's try connecting, just in case. So I'm determined to find something to connect to. Blah, 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 blah. I overheard a mysterious secret room cabinet. I need to find a way into that room. Poking my finger into the electronics has no effect. Oh, well. How about poking that into the electronics? Using that won't work. Alright. Let's go get the ice and see if we can use it on you. I don't know that that's going to be it, but... Is that something new? No? Hey, buddy! Hey there, fellow worker! You again! What now? Nothing. Apparently. Oh. Right. Got some ice. Go for a run. Come on. Ah. Down. Faster than a speeding something. That's not such a good idea. Uh. That's not such a good idea. What if I use a salami on it? <laughs> I am not gonna do that. All right, okay. Uh, a fireproof blanket. Mm, that won't work here. Uh, 
I mean, I could. I don't know why I would want to. Right, here we are. This is this thing. Let's look all around just to see. I can't see anything else. Alright, I mean, if I stuffed up the thing with a fireproof blanket and then set something on fire there. No way am I doing that. That's not such a good idea. Mm, that won't work here. I don't know why I would want to. You got anything for me? There is a fault on this line. They must have smashed the office up pretty good. The manuscript. It's here, all right. Oh, George. Yep. Tell her. I just saw our bad guys, and I even know where they've hidden it. I'll be with you soon. Just gotta find my way into their office. You gonna be okay? I'm fine. Virgil can be so sweet. Yeah, he can, can't he? Huh. No? That's not the right approach. I mean, I can look through. I can still see Spalacci and Fingers in the office. If I could just get them to leave, I might be able to grab the manuscript. No, not that. Come on. There we go. Okay. Okay, what can we do with this the thing? The first aid box has been adjusted to hide a security card reader. Alright, so I need to get a security card from somewhere. Can I bash it? Mm, that won't work here. No, nope. didn't think so. I don't know where I'm going to get a security card from. Unless I want to go back to those other rooms. The ones I couldn't get into. Because... Yeah, I like that one. Locked. I wonder if what's happening in there has something to do with this Tony character. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. The sign on the door says packing room. I wonder what they could be packing. Salami for sure, but maybe drugs, guns, or even worse. Pirate video games. Didn't need that length Locked. of course. I wonder if what's happening in there has something to do with this Tony character. I mean, I could... Go to the vent and then shout out, Dude, Tony's escaping! But I don't know why. Nobody has dropped a security card around here, have they? Nope. Oh, what are you? I missed you. Okay, pigs are going around. Can I move? No. Nope. Alright, so it's not a timing puzzle. Is that just set dressing? Or if I do it enough times, will somebody come out? Because no, I can't move. Do I put melting ice on this? 
so that it just goes haywire and keeps rotating pigs all the time. Is there something special about the backs of the pigs that I'm missing? Like, does the ink spot change so that I know that this is a real world spotting puzzle rather than an in world spotting puzzle? Doesn't look like it. different about any of those pigs. Might have missed something there. Oh! How did you become open? Oh! Well, I can hear fire! Locked. I wonder if what's happening in there has something to do with oh, this. Oh, okay, so that's... This is the other side of that. Alright. Well, not the other side exactly, but another way into that same like room. It hasn't been used in a while. Maybe it's the wrong time of year for smoking meats. The door's blocked by all that wood. So what am I going to do? It's a heavy metal door to a smoker. All right, so I can open a smoker door. Oh. The door is locked shut, but the handle is cold, so it hasn't been used. Okay, but this one has. All right, so... I mean, I'm not sure. A large, heavy door suspended from a rail. That thing looks tough enough to withstand a bomb blast. All right. Oh, that I... The handle's very hot. I nearly melted my fingers to it. Come on, ice. Okay, under my control, George has burned his fingers more than once. Not sure why I want to get into the smoker, but I can. I mean, I assume I'm going to put out the fire or something so that they have to come down and oversee the meats because even hardened gangsters you know need to get their salami ready no way am I touching that thing again I know not with my bare hands anyway I know that's why I'm grabbing this right no way am I doing oh that. okay no okay I've got no reason to try that. All right, then I'm just going to use the fire blanket to open it. Perfect. And then throw the ice on it to put out the fire. Hmm, that won't work here. Okay. So what are you? There's meat hanging from the ceiling, dripping fat onto the floor. The smell's powerful and the heat's intense. Grandpa Stobart's home distillery all over again. Alright, we'll do something with the meats. Ugh. Well, the fat from the meat is disgusting. I'm gonna need industrial soap to get this off. Swap it for a salami? No? Okay, so now I am in here. Oh, my gonna get them am I gonna get them to like smell the roasted meaty thing and make them all hungry I'm greased up already so I don't need to touch it again so I am greased so now that I am greasy I 
wonder if what's happening in there has something to do with this Tony character. So, what happens now I'm greasy? Okay, you definitely don't look any different. I think you're just a go round and round to show that the stuff works thing. Alright, I am greasy. Now that I am greasy, what can I do with this grease? I mean, I could start a grease fire, but I mean, it's on me. Huh. Try sticking your finger in the hole now. No point messing around with the card reader until I have the card to use on it. No, try sticking your greasy hands in it. see Spalachian fingers in the office. If I could just get them to leave, I might be able to grab the manuscript. That's not the right approach. I mean, everything could be the right mm, approach. That work here. Using that won't work. Using that won't work. That's not such a good idea. Hmm, that won't work here. That's not quite right. No. All right, okay. I mean, the fact that the battery has never dipped all this time that we've been playing. That's impressive technology. Come on, down. Fall to your doom, Stobard. Oh. Maybe don't quite do that. Okay, so you have greasy, slippery fingers. Nothing's happened. The bone cruncher isn't firing up. Alright, can I get those keys back then? Because I don't need you to come down anymore. Aha! Just needed to right click to do it. Alright, okay. So now I have. Alright, bone cruncher. Prepare to be used. I put the keys back in the bone cruncher. I mean, that is such a name. Okay, cool. That is the way safety keys work, so that's nice. Oh! I don't think like what I'm about to do. I put the keys back in the bone cruncher. Yeah, I've got an idea. Let's make it go crunch. No? I thought I could have thrown these Stobart patented golf club in there. Alright, okay, so you're a bone cruncher. I don't know if that is real or... I don't know if that is meant to be doing that, that's what I mean. Or whether it's just more set decoration. I don't suppose they're coming down because I've started the bone cruncher on them, are they? Because it's interrupting their Ave Maria. 
still see Spalacian fingers in the office. If I could just get them to leave, I might be able to grab the manuscript. It's the air vent for Finger's office. Yeah. All right, yeah, I should save it as well, just in case we hit that thing. Okay, so what do you say now? Searching factory for clues. No, that's not a thing. All right. It's not. It's not a. No, it doesn't look like it. There's no thing on it's the a bottom of it. of safety keys. Cool. I put the keys back in the bone cruncher. Yeah, you did. And we turned the bone cruncher on. And I looked around for some bones to crunch. Locked. I wonder if what's happening in there has something to do with this Tony character. Alright, let's go back to the guy and talk to him and say, hey, my fellow person. Do you know about Tony? Is that. I mean, that looks like a thing that you could climb up, but I don't know where you would want to. Maybe I haven't done everything I need to do with the pig. Hey, I'm here to talk to you. Hey there, fellow worker. You again? What now? Maybe I threw the ice into the... thing? I mean, I don't see why I would. I didn't see a way to use it. Come on. Let's go. Okay, no. Let's try greasy ice on this. I've got no reason to try that. I mean, yes you do. The reason to try it is because I said so. And I said so because I'm a crazy mad fool who just wants to try everything. Oh, do I need to wait until the ice is really thin? before I try putting it in there. Because then it is credit card sized. Or thingy sized. Let's try that. Right, there we go. Come on. That's not the right approach. Hmm, that is a shame. No way am I doing that. Alright, so let's just wait here for a little bit and see if it just goes even smaller. I don't think it does. I think that's the end of it. Nope. Okay. Now I couldn't see any way to dump ice in there. Okay. Let me stop this then. No, stop, stop it. There we go, alright. Now, I don't see any interactions here. Oh, unless. No? I don't see any interactions that would allow me to stuck here the forklift truck appears to be dead no lights nothing so let's try something else let's try picking it up right, that is a waste bin that is absolutely chock full of crappy no, of crappy dead meats all right 
So let's do that. The safety key fits the lock on the forklift. Yeah, it does. Then we'll turn it down. Then I want to open it. Must be for waste meat. Can we open it? No, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to open it. Can we do that? No? Alright, okay. And I can't climb... I... No! God damn, man! Stop that! Okay, so I can climb it. I can't open it. I mean, there's no way to open it while I'm on it. Because that would just be stupid. So, let's go back to the piggy. The smoking uh, thing. No. Oh my god. Go over here, George. Uh, in case you can't tell, I am doing this with mouse only now, because the keyboard controls were just not... I mean, this isn't much better, but it's better. Come on. And I can't jump on here, and I can't use either of those things. Hey, you. Do you want any of these? That's not quite right. Can I swap the vintage salami for one of Look, your things? I've got the Martino vintage, the salami of kings. Kings? There ain't no kings in that. Just a bookkeeper. Huh? I said the vintage. It's a good keeper. <laughs> right. Oh my god. <laughs> I am not going to do that. Hey, I'm your new worker here. I'm a bail bondsman. That's not such a good idea. Alright, if I've got greasy hands, can I open something that couldn't the open? shutter's locked. No point in going that way. I mean, I could open another smoker, but I don't see what the point is. Can't open that. I don't want to move Locked. any of those. I wonder if what's happening in there has something to do with this Tony character. This a corner of the wall there that is all weirdly bricked. The door's blocked by all that wood. All right, can I do something with all that wood? That smoker looks like it hasn't been used in a while. Maybe it's the wrong time of year for smoking meats. Maybe there's something special in there. That I'm just missing. No. The door is locked shut, but the handle is cold, so it hasn't been used. I mean, okay, I can go in here again. It's great to be here. There's meat hanging from the ceiling, dripping fat onto the floor. All right. I'm greased up already, so I don't need to touch it again. So am I meant to be using that to help me get into somewhere? Can I set the grease on fire? Hmm. 
a fault on this line. I mean, there isn't a fault on the line. What there isn't is a phone at the other end, so it should just ring and ring and ring. Hey, company, agreed to decipher it. So, one of the gangsters, manuscripts taken by the goons, found the goons, virtual, so with his MP3 being smashed, and back to me, dropped a pack of cigarettes, got a cigarette number in his manuscript, twice. Set the Marino gang, cocked on the front. Alright, I just need to find a way into that room. Alright, okay. No, ah, uh, I meant to. Let me phone. Alphonse Hotel? Hi, is that Alfonso's? Sure is. What do you want? I'm doing a survey on closets. You ever been trapped in one? Hey, George! My hero! How you doing? I'm good, Juanita. Just checking you're still okay. Gotta go, though. Drop by any time, George. I owe you big time. <laughs> I bet you do. Bye. Mm, okay, well that's a different thing anyway. Anything new? Not really. I better get on it. Okay. Bye. All right. Okay. So I don't really see what I can do around here. I mean, I can get the ice, but I don't know why I want the ice. Come on. Alright, groovy. There you are back in there. This one is locked. Can't do anything with it, right? Locked. Very wise. You never know who's after your salami these days. I made that joke already, so I won't do it again. Without a full protective suit, I won't be touching those cans. And that's the way in from that side, but there's no point in doing that. This is the truck that is always on for no reason. I suppose I can leave to go and look somewhere else to find another clue that I'm missing. I'm here for Anna Maria's manuscript nope. and I'm not leaving until I get it back. I'm guessing the salami is going to be used for the switcheroo. What if I do that now? Metal shutter for the loading bay. Alright, there's nothing down there that I can do. The shutter's locked. No point in going that way. Ah. Uh, okay, so you can't go onto that bit of the air. Of the, uh... Mm, loading dock. There's no way to do anything there. In here we've got a pig. Can I do anything with this pig? No. Get some ice. Alright, it's green now. Alright. For some reason this bit is green. Is this because I moved the pigs? Let me try moving the pig and just see if that changes anything. Because I'm really so I'm re uh, I'm almost convinced it does not. Yeah. I can't see anything different between the pigs. I mean, if I was oh, that's green. If I was really think. If I was betting on this, I well no. I would say you would need to push this a number of times, and then like oh the body comes out, and on the body is the um, key card, but that doesn't make enough sense. Oh, 
one last time. That doesn't help me in any way. Can't like put something on here so that the pig will catch it as it goes around, so that it can be used by Tony as a type of escape. As an attempted escape, rather, because that doesn't make any sense. There's those things. Can't I can open that. Right? But that's gonna give what? me the same yeah. I wonder if what's happening in there has something to do with this Tony character. Don't suppose you can connect to his PDA while you're standing this close, right? No, that's fine. Go in there. All right, okay, you've got music going on here. Let's try this. Let's try climbing up here. I'm sure I must have thought about this. We'll try using the PDA to connect. Okay, because I was gonna send different kinds of music out there. I can still see Spalacci and Fingers in the office. If I could just get them to leave, I might be able to grab the manuscript. Right, but how do I get them to leave? How do I get the key card? How do I practice that incredible falling that you do, George? No, that's not where I clicked now, was it? So I can pick up those keys. I don't know why I would want to try putting the keys through the gate. Great, but I can. Using that won't work. Oh, well. And then there's this, which doesn't do anything. Again, I can turn on the bone crusher machine thing. That doesn't help. All right, all right. I am stuck. My vaulted logic does not work out here. I mean, I could put the safety keys on a pig so that the pig could pick it up. That doesn't make any sense because the safety keys aren't going to help not Tony escape. Right. Hey buddy, do you want to talk to me about the safety keys? Oh, come on, I've got to... There we go. Safety keys, talk. I've got no reason to try that. Yeah, you do, because I'm desperate. Alright, alright. Yeah, let's do that. Then, uh, it's Firefox.
And we'll look at the broken sword. Uh, right, okay, where are we? Where are... No, not that. Not that window, not this time. There we go. All right, here we are. Let's have a look. Searching the factory secret. Where the open moves the vault. Clank jokes. Side get Enter the factory. The shutters are all down. They're all locked. Look at the back. There's a red light. People talking. Enter the doorway to the right of the girl. Go downstairs. Take the fireproof blanket. From the conveyor belt. Check the shutters on the right. Strange noises. So enter the doorway. So Open the medicine box. Dump to the area. Take the machine safety keys. Left. Go outside. See the air vent. Do that. Forklift. Check the forklift. Move the thing. Do the stuff. Office. Look through and hear the thing. So it's under an F for firm. Have to find a way to get the guys out of there. Go down and enter the factory again. Go to the conveyor belt. Go left to the hang lights for the see a control. Click on the plan. We'll see the hanging fix. Move the carousel. Move in now. See the early clothes. Okay. So it opens it. The carousel of the smoking room. Go there. Uh, uh, get grease on your hands with port wings. Use the fireproof blanket to pick up the smoldering log by George's left foot to get fire blanking holding smoldering wood. All right. Okay. So, I mean, I was on the right track. But, you know, for some reason, it just didn't like that. All right. I don't understand, but I'll, I'll go with it. Uh, zoom. I never saw a smoking log. I mean, I got the idea of trying to smoke them out. But I never found a log. Hold that one right there. No, there, no, there. Oh my god. All right, fine. A collection of logs is smoldering in the tray. All right. The smell of burning wood brings back so many memories. Maple and cedar on Grandpa's barbecue. Birch being cleared by the loggers up behind old Jed's cabin. The school roof burning merrily on that hot summer's day. I still contend I had nothing to do with that very unfortunate accident. Thank you. Let's try picking up and burning. burning. Charcoal, but it's still smoldering. No way can I pick that up with my bare hand. All right, let's smoke them out. I can hardly feel the heat of the wood through the blanket. <laughs> the smell of burning wood brings back so many. No, things. okay, we don't need to hear. I just wanted to look at it to see or sense it, I guess. This was an unfortunate that I had to use it to look at things, to find out stuff. All right. Now, smoldering wood log. The wood smoldering in the air vent, but only a small amount's going into the room. I need to make more. Right, well, we'll burn that. <laughs> I am not going to do that. No? Using that won't work. Alright, now I've done that, I can't really do anything else. Using that won't work. Don't tell me I want to put the ice on there to cause it to crackle and fizz. Doesn't make any sense. That's not the right approach. Alright, well, we're just going to... I mean, if I could, I would pick that up. And then bone chipper it. But that doesn't seem to... Alright, let's try ice. Because that will extinguish the, the uh, fire, causing a lot of smoke to come out. Poor. Uh. Hmm. 
outside, right over here, in, pick it up. Run! Steam is not smoke. He said being very, very factual. There we go, yeah. Ah, that smoke. Don't you just love it? <laughs> the smell of Naples herself. In a salami. <laughs> Who would have thunk it, huh? But hey, you can have too much of a good thing, right? <laughs> what say we uh, <laughs> all head down to the club and uh, celebrate our little success? <laughs> For God's sake, yes. <laughs> so, do I need to go? No, I don't need to move fast. Wow. I don't know, those walk animations just... Hey, Tony! How's it hanging, Tony? <laughs> oh, we're coming you out there now. finish up now and head home, you hear? What about the new guy? What new guy? Fella started just now. Ah, let him be. Hey, he ain't gonna starve, right? <laughs> Fingers and the other guys are leaving. Now's my chance to get the manuscript. Right. So, okay, did they leave the door open? Fingers and the rest of them came out of this room. But how? The room's full of wooden boxes and the Come on, I mean, we have already seen that, so stop being a dumbass, George. I've solved step 14 of the problem when I hadn't solved step 13. Alright, now we're looking for Mr. Tony. <laughs> Whoa, there's a pool of blood under the chair in the corner. Hmm. We all know that pigs don't sit on chairs. I mean, they do if you put them on them. I'm not about to sit in that chair. No, but I wanted you to pick up the knife. No? All right. Okay. So now we're we'll doing the thing that I said before. Right, these are not. No, they're meat products. They are not human meat products. They didn't put him in here, did they? No. I'm still covered in grease. reasons that I don't know. So yeah, now let's push this button again and see if we get a dead body to come out of there. Which I can search. Yep, here we go, we've changed the angle. My god, this must be Tony. Looks like it's going to be another good year for the Martino Vintage. But you're carrying around a dead body that's been processed into sausage in your jacket. Or pants, maybe. I don't know. Uh. Poor guy's hanging from a meat hook. Yeah. This must be the guy Fingers was talking about earlier. Yeah, but he's so probably this is got what a... happens if you cross the Martinos. But he's got to have a thing on him, leave right? the guy in peace. No, you shouldn't. You should search him. I really don't want to do this. But I've got no choice. You have searched uh, more than enough dead bodies. Yes! A key card. Cool. It's the key card I found on the cold, dead body of Tony. 
I mean, if they are shipping dead bodies out as Martino Special Vintage, then you just need to buy a Martino Special Vintage and then go, this is human. So that, you know, then you can raid the warehouse where it's prepared. Thank heavens for secret doorways. Have we got anything down here? No, nothing down there. Oh, we go up. Uh -huh. and then we look under F for found. Oh, look, there it is. And what, we try and smuggle it out in a salami? It's the cabinet where finger stashed Anna Marie's Just, or oh, do we put it in there? Word. I've never seen so many locks. How am I going to get into it? Well, first of all, let's just try. The cabinet's locked and secured so tightly that it's impossible to open. Even a seasoned pro would struggle here. No, I bet a seasoned pro would not struggle here. I bet a seasoned pro would be okay with that. All right, well, let's search the drawers. The drawers are locked. Fingers must have taken the key. What is that? Something wrecked in the silk hanky. Whatever's wrapped in this handkerchief must be very precious to someone. Terrific. A photograph of actress Lucy Chu from that film In Cold Blood. Nice, but not worth wrapping in a handkerchief. A promo photograph of Lucy Chu. I mean, could the you... drawers are locked. Turn it over? <laughs> I am not gonna do that. So we're not looking at a simple... Oh, look! I've got more things now! Ah! Right, so it just rotates around. I suppose they happen to use the same no one. No way no. am I doing that. Didn't think so. How about we smash it? Using that won't work. Can we push you? Because you look, seem no to be on casters. No way am I into that cabinet with my bare hands. No, I was wanting you to push it. Using that won't work. That's not the right approach. No, but we're just going to use all of them because... That's not the right approach. Oh. What if we push it from the other side? No way am I going to get into that cabinet with my bare hands. No, but I was thinking that maybe you could push it from the other side down into the... Um, bone cruncher. No? Why? Yeah, Marie doesn't. The drawers Anna Maria no doesn't try and open them. happen to be Lucy Chu, does she? No way am I going to get into that cabinet with my bare hands. I want to look at it, though. It's the cabinet where Finger stashed Anna Maria's manuscript. Got the safety keys? I do have the safety keys. I don't suppose. Using that no. won't work. Didn't think so. Hmm. Having solved one puzzle, I am now stuck on another one. Oh wow, no uh, safety railings either, so you can fall off. Safety railings on the stairs themselves, but not on these other bits. Alright, okay.
Is everybody gone? Am I all alone now? Yeah, you've gone, so I can't talk to you anymore. I don't know why. I mean, I've done the thing with the ice, I suspect. Maybe I should ask somebody about Lucy Chu and whether there was a a, f a a code used in the film that she was in, or her date of birth, or the date that the film was made, or something. But let's just try this first of all, and then. <laughs> I am not going to do that. No, okay, that's fine then. Where's my phone? Alright, I'm into the office. Nope, nothing to connect. Okay. Anything new? Not really, I better get on it. Yes, something Bye. new. I am here in the office and I don't know how to deal with that. Is you using that no, won't work. Okay, you're not locked there. No way am I doing that. Did I get the silk hanky as well? There, yeah. A silk handkerchief. Obviously Italian. That's what he's using the silk hanky on here. Mm, that won't work here. I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't know. I th don't know if it's keys or numbers. Using that won't work. All right, let's go and speak to. I don't need the apron on anymore because everybody's gone away. So if I ditch the apron, I can talk to... what's his face? Very descriptive, eh? Let us go and speak to that man. Who I traded cigarettes to. I don't suppose there's anything here. Search him again, can I? You're not going to do that. You're not even interactable anymore. Alright, fine. Over there. So over there. Right, groovy. Fall down. Ditch the apron. No, everybody's gone. Ah. The display case is full of salamis. You can take as many salamis as you want now. Locked. Very wise. You never know who's after your salami these days. It is the door. That door leads yeah. into the back room of the trade shop. Locked. Very wise. You never know who's after your salami these days. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. I can't push the button to make you go round anymore, which is fine. Do I need to eat some of the salami in order to find things? I mean, maybe I can pick up that thing, the cleaver at the back now. Whoa. Yeah. There's a pool of blood under the chair in the corner. Yes. I'm not about to sit in that chair. No, you're about to pick up that thing so that you can attack. I'm not the about door. to sit in that chair. No. I'm not about to sit in that chair. All right, okay, you're not going to do that. You're definitely not going to sit in that chair, nor are you going to interact with that interesting-looking cleaver in any way. All right, let's get our phones. Let's phone the bell bonds. Do you happen to know where? There is a fog on this line. Who or what the Lucy Chu is? All right, let's phone the Alfonso's hotel. At the very least, Juanita might answer and just say hello. That's that. Alfonso's hotel. What do you want? Hi, Juanita. It's me, George. Nice hearing from you, George. But uh, listen, I'm busy. Gotta go. Catch you later. Kiss, kiss. It's the key card I found on the cold, dead body of Tony. Yes, it is. You got a hanky and a photograph of Lucy Chu. That's not quite right. I don't know. A promo photograph of Lucy Chu. I mean, that looks like a Polaroid, just from the way that that's done, but that's no. That's not the right approach. Look, I just wanted to see if it's a mouth fit. That's not the right approach. And I'm still creased up. For no real reason. That's not such a good idea. Well, no, I just wondered if there was something on the hanky. That didn't even get me a words. Hmm. Well, if there's anybody out there who wants to shout possible suge suggestions at me for how to do this, I would love to hear them. Nothing's happened. The bone cruncher isn't firing up. I don't know that I even clicked on that. Okay. Anything else in this room that could be mistaken for an object I can interact with? No. Did I miss something upstairs then? Or on the stairs? Right, and that's the top. Okay, so now I am here. Not the best view in the world, but hey, whatever. Do I need to look outside the windows in order to go? I can see out over the meatpacking company. Can't say I feel that factory boss gene kicking in, though. Uh, did I call it and I just didn't look out the window? Through the open window, I can just see the bone cruncher. Oh, oh you... I think it'd be a big mistake. I bet it could tear cars apart. Oh, come on. Oh, my God. I mean, that is the idea I had to just... <clears throat> Oh. 
The secure cab and its wheels are rusted and seized up. Nothing a bit of oil or grease won't fix. Ah, that is why I am greased. It's the cabinet where Finger stashed Anna Maria's manuscript. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to. The no, that's the push. Budge without some extra help. Right, I've got the extra help. No way am I going to get into that no. cabinet with my bare hands. Me. Oh. The silk hanky soaks up all the grease. It's the hanky that's important right now, not the photo. Sure, the photo will be very useful later. I think it's a missed opportunity, unless Lucy Chu comes up later on. I think it's a missed opportunity to not call back to uh, uh, Broken Sword 2, where they were on the set, and whoever that blonde starlet was, whose name I've forgotten. Interesting. I can remember the name of Haikyuu McEwen, but I cannot remember the lady's name. Well, that stain sure won't ever come out. Cool. That is one ruined handkerchief. Stains like that never come out. Uh, yeah, I do have the keys. Excellent. No, come on. Just run in the direction that I'm telling you to run. In we go. Up the stairs. And now, be smeared with grease. Maybe the grease from the handkerchief could loosen up those wheels. There, that should do it. The wheels might move a little now. Push it. No way am oh. I going to get into that cabinet with my bare hands. I meant push, not interact with. Out the window, out the window, into the thing, smash! Now to get down there and start it. I should have saved before I did this so that I could see what the outcome was if you pushed it in straight away. But you know, this is one way to open it. And given that you have infinite time and you don't care if they've seen you or not, it's not a bad way to do it. Uh, where are you? There you are. I put and the keys there. back in the bone cruncher. Bone Cruncher is ready. Woo! We'll have those keys. So not only have we broken in and stolen all your stuff, but also you can't hey, start your machine. An MP3 player. Oh. I know one little boy is going to think it's Christmas already. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Away. Imported MP3 players, huh? I mean, that was 40 gigs, and I've got sitting here uh, a 16 gig one just sitting beside me. Now, it cost me like 20 quid, so. Uh, times, they have a changed. Underneath the MP3 player is. Anna Maria's manuscript. Oh my god. No, no, let's look at this MP3 player. Oh man. Wow. I mean, I had one that looked something vaguely like that, in that sort of small, short way with only a couple of buttons and no real screen on it. Back in the day. I've still got it knocking around somewhere as well. It's my backup in case my other one dies unexpectedly and then I can listen to it while going to purchase a new one 
or while waiting for a new one to arrive, but wow! 40 gigs on something like that, no can't MP3 believe player. that. And underneath the MP3 player, because it was hiding it. Because look at the size of the two things. It's the manuscript I've been after. It's old and delicate, but it survived being snatched by fingers. <laughs> As opposed to my toes. It's the manuscript I've been after all this time. There we go. I oh, just wanted to hear that line properly. Dun, dun, dun. All right, 14th century. The question is, how am I going to research it? Museums are out of the question. No, I need somewhere much more salubrious. To Andre Labano? I don't know. I mean, this place is not. George, you found it. Oh. Thank you. Oh Thank you. God, that clapping animation. All part of the service. Now, let's see just what we've got here. Oh, different parts of Latin. All right. Castle. Hell. Oh, the date. Bunch of sim black symbols. They look pretty red to me. Angels, cities, fortified cities, coats of arms. Ooh, well, all right. Let's look at the Latin header. It says, "Oh, the Lord of Fortress Lord of the One True Patriarch awaits the angel, for he who is worthy and follows the path of the righteous." Your Latin's good. It was kind of geeky at school, but you know what? It sure paid off. No, so law school. All we need, you need to do some it. is work out who the true patriarch was, and where his fortress is, and <sighs> then find a way to get below it. It's in Latin. <laughs> Maybe an English castle. It says, "The first, find the knights who share a horse." That's the Templars again. And grasp again. the stone to open the way. Maybe. The first refers to the path that the righteous must take to reach the angel. That makes sense. So we should understand the clue once we arrive at the right place. Yeah, because that makes sense to find a statue of two people riding a horse. It says, the second, address the arms upon the shields and close the circle for the knights to let you pass. Oh, those ones up there then, eh? You gotta do all of those and put them in a special order? <laughs> Uh, part three. It says, the third, follow the master's worldly route and prove yourself worthy to lift. First, the fortress were heated fight, but was overwhelmed by Mamluk's might. Then he traveled to Longshank's fair city, and as grand preceptor, he was received. To the temple at Vilnove, where he was appointed grand master of the order, before journeying to the island where he holds his court. We're not talking about Arthur, are we? No, that doesn't make sense. But the island where he holds his court is probably possibly Britain? But come on, you have got to be saying, oh my god, not Templars again. Bloody Templars, blah blah Templars. It says, the last, to see the light turn from Holy Sion to face the great fortress of the Empire of the East, the seat of the Holy Church in the West, the learned Coptic city to the south. Turn from Holy Sion to face, from where? Jerusalem? Mm, well, those are interesting things. Okay, we looked at all of those. Oh, you're not going to make a comment on the fish? All right, the fleur de lis. The fleur de lis in some pattern. Uh, up, down, or north, south, north, east, east, west, or west, east, north, west. Interesting. A fairly typical depiction of a fortified European city. The fires of hell are consuming the city. The manuscript was made in 1307. The Templars must have known an attack oh, C, it's not and took care their treasure would be safe. Why are you not commenting that, yet again, it's the Templars? 
Cross, Crescent Moon, Star of David. I wonder why these symbols are here. Because it refers to one of these passages. Uh, Christian, Jerusalem, Memlook, maybe? Hmm. All right. Well, let's look. This must be the angel that the manuscript refers to. It doesn't look much like treasure to me. You... If you proved, if you released an angel and proved that angels or supernatural beings actually existed, my, you could charge your own fees for everything. You would never have to do anything ever again. And this looks like St. George, the patron saint of England fighting the famous dragon. See how the fortified city has minarets? It looks Oh eastern. god this before we again The city on the right looks eastern but it's being defended by a Christian knight Wasn't St George English? No actually he came from Turkey Yeah Look there's Baphomet Hey I recognize this It's Baphomet the idol that the Templars were accused of worshiping I really need to find a way to research these subjects Four knights with shields. The fourth coat of arms is hidden. I thought you were going to bug out on me then for a second, because you didn't do anything. Oh, holy man and king! A deformed holy man gazes over the seas. Now that's a king who really loves himself. <laughs> All right. I'm going to talk about the people who were sailed across the city. All right. Well, I think I've. Do you need to that. code it, George? Uh uh, not fully. I need a library or a database. But the streets are too dangerous. Can't we get information online? Well, there is a website, Andre Labano's Society of oh, Arcarian Knowledge, but I was locked out. Didn't you say that Virgil had hacking skills? Yeah, but he's pretty angry right now. But you've got that then tiny, tiny MV3. <sighs> Anna Maria looks less nervous than when we met. All right, I yep, guess she's fine. listening up. Anna Maria, can you spare a moment? What do you need, George? I just wanted to talk about things, yeah? Oh, let's talk about Virgil. Yeah. How's Virgil holding? Well, he's pretty upset. He blames you for the loss of his MP3 player. Oh, come on. You guys weren't even after me. <laughs> well, that meatpacking place is pretty shady. It's a real factory, huh? It is. But take my advice, never eat a Martino salami. Ooh. Well, I still got that. I can't tell. All right. So why are the Mafia after your manuscript? My father was a heavy drinker. There wasn't a bar in town he didn't tell his treasure map story, and the fact that his daughter was decoding it. I guess it was just a matter of time before someone took him seriously, huh? No, that's... alright, fine. So, this manuscript has been in your family for years, huh? It was handed down to my father. He had a whole collection. Oh, so there were more? Many more. Tell me more about them. So each one could point to a hidden treasure. I wouldn't be too sure about that. But this one certainly does. Hey, do you want my s oh phrasing? Do you want my salami? Look what I got from the meatpacking company. Very nice, George. Mm, shame I don't like salami. God, saying shame it's a dead body. Uh. Yeah, here we go. No, nobody wanted to talk about that? How about the MP3 player? I found this little baby down at Martino's. You want it? No thanks, George. But I'm sure Virgil would like it. Oh, you could be right. Yep. Alright, I want to talk to you about Alright. Nope. Alright. 
Okay, moving on the floor. Oh, you're not on the floor anymore. That's great. You've graduated to the sofa. Virgil, my partner at the bail bonds. You still got yeah, that amazing. Pretty mad about something. That amazing book, flickering book. You should have insured it. Virgil, I feel terrible. Virgil, the silent treatment. I hate that. All right, Virgil. I'm gonna make your wildest dreams come true. Virgil, I know nothing can replace your MP3 player. Except a new MP3. Well, what do you know? Same model. Uh, you steal it? No, certainly not. I'm a lawyer. I liberated exactly, it. So you stole it. Hmm. Well, it doesn't replace the music, though, does it? Ah, heck. I got it all on CD at home anyway. Well, thanks, George. Man, so we're in that transition period when we still had CDs but could load them up onto MP3 players, but couldn't download them off the internet. Okay, all right, I need to talk to you. Hey, Virgil, you got five minutes? Now hey, I've what can I replaced do it. Uh, first of all, hey, what about PDA? Virgil, I need to get online to do some research. So go online, what's stopping you? Uh, the site I need blackballed me after Glastonbury. Locked me out. Take it from me, George, and I've been in prison. Ain't no such thing as locked out. Now, where's that little gadget? I know it's here somewhere. Oh my god, you're putting your hands there through the go, sofa George. in a not particularly great way. Useful. Whoa! Look, that that's was a flashcard with a few little features of my own design. Just right. slip it into your PDA and ride that internet. Man. Alright, hey, let's talk about Anna Maria. So, uh... How's Anna Maria been holding up? Oh, don't worry about her, man. I talked her into a nice, cool place. Huh? What do you mean? Oh, she's been through a lot, George. She needed a shoulder to lean on. Uh-huh. And you just happen to have one available, huh? You know me, George. Yep, I do. <laughs> I'm not... I'm not un... Uh. I do not hate that possibly Anna Maria will hook up with Virgil rather than with George. I mean, I don't know what happened between George and Nico. I don't know if she's in this game. I'm assuming not because of what's going on. So, what happened after we barricaded ourselves in? First they broke into your office, then they searched the whole place, then they smashed everything up. Oh, I bet you showed them a few moves though, hey Virgil? Are you kidding? I was under the desk, man. Oh, well so what did they do then? Busted my MP3 player and left. Well, that's some story. <laughs> What's so funny, man? Yeah. Well, you under a desk, Virgil. I mean, <laughs> I wish I'd seen that. You want to keep me as your friend? You better leave it, George. Oh, come on. Why the bloody hell do you blame me? She came. All right. All right. All right. Where are you? MP3 playing flash thing. Oh, you're already inserted, are you? All right. Connect. I mean, that's not what I expected to happen, but Lovano's private server in France, I'm going to assume. Connected to device, accessing internet. Hack connection. No! Oh. <laughs> Alright, okay, then yes. Oh, Hi, George. This is my homemade hacking system, with the emphasis on homemade, know what I mean? I'll show you how to use it by hacking into a computer owned by an old friend of mine. All right. This is you, symbolized by your PDA. Yeah. This is your destination, the database you're attempting to hack. What you gotta do is connect your data stream to the target computer without being spotted or stopped. See here, my friend lives on the other side of the state, this mountain range is in the way, so we gotta go around it. If we're gonna hack into the database, we're gonna have to pass through these points, or root nodes. They disguise the data stream from your PDA, so you don't get found out. To manipulate the data stream, you gotta use routers and refractors. You understand? You're utilizing other less secure systems in the area. You're pretty limited to what the device can find at the time, but there's normally enough to do the job. This one acts like a mirror. It'll deflect the beam at 90 degree angles. This one refracts your beam at 45 degree angles. 
these are splitters. They can split a beam at either 45 or 180 degree angles. As the target device is searching for one data stream, you'll need to converge the data streams back into one. You do this using a splitter, but in reverse. But if you're using a splitter in one direction, you can't use it in the other. These points are the bad boys. They're nodes which detect what you're up to and stop your hacking. You gotta be one step ahead of these fellas. Accidentally root your data stream into one of these, and your connections bust open. I recommend you plan your route before you start placing nodes all over the place. So, watch me complete this puzzle. Oh, so you can move those, can you? Okay, right, that's fine. Yep. Oh, and you can turn them. Wow, alright, fine. You don't want a 45 degree angle there, do you? Oh, you can... right, fine. Yep. Yeah, nice. Okay, this there is... you go. Now let's see what my friend has in his database. Oh, no! Oh boy, we didn't want to see that! He is one outrageous dude. Okay, George, your turn. We've seen that before. I think that was in three? Alright. And I like that this signal keeps flicking up and down as well. Alright, so there's you. That's the way you've got to get to. You've got to go through that one. So, I mean, if I was just doing a thing, then I might do something like that. There we go. But then, presumably, I can't... Yeah, I can't do anything like that. Okay. So, I would want that no oh, I can't all right. all right so that that No, 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 that's... I, I assume I can't work it like that? No, because it's going to hit that one again. Alright, so instead of doing a 90 degrees there... There we go! Server has been hacked! Yale database has been downloaded to the PDA. Why Yale? Uh, do all these things. Are these just all the notes? No. Latin old manuscript translated. It's manuscript. Alright. Let's see what else we got. Oh, he's. Did I overheard a meeting? Okay. Why well, the fortress of the one true patriarch awaits the angel? The angel must represent the treasure. No, it probably represents the angel given what we saw at the beginning with their thing. But yeah. I just need to find out where the fortress is and how to get below it. Can't all be that hard. That non manuscript translated. Harry's manuscript is beautiful. Medieval Latin verses surrounded by pictures and symbols. The pictures seem to tell a story. If only we could work out its signature. Virgil looks at with a replacement MP3 plays and the is all happy self. Obtained historical database. Oh, so those are clickable links. Would you give me a cool hacking device? Successfully hacked the database in spite of being powered by Andre Lavenar. Lavenar is a rat, but its database contains a lot of valuable medieval information. Let's click Latin. Alright, and there we are. There's the whole thing. Alright, go back. And then historical database. Welcome note. Dear colleagues, I will go to the Society of Antiquarian Knowledge. Simply enter the keyword on the subject you wish to research. Don't just open the first class repository of wisdom. Those of you who know me will agree that I am a tolerant and open minded man. It is therefore with particular regret that I must inform you that after making a number of brazen and fallacious claims, George Sobard, a man who would once have claimed many of you as friends, has been barred for life from the English repository. I waste no more time on this disagreeable subject, and instead invite you to enjoy a little drawing inspiration by acclaimed exploits, Mr. Stobard, your friend. 
Oh no. A bunny? And then slay the dragon? Oh right. Is that meant to be George Slayward? Alright, fine. And is that the only word we've got right now? Before? The link with Baphomet proves that there's some kind of Templar connection here. No, it doesn't. It's information on the internet. All it can talks about is, you know, that there is information on the internet that somebody has written. Oh look, my bars are going down. Ugh. One of the key charges leveled against the Knights Templar during their trials, trials in the 14th century was that they worshipped an ungodly head idol that they called Baphomet. Baphomet is probably either a corruption of the name Muhammad or the translation of the goddess Sophia, wisdom being encrypted with the Adbash cipher. Some believe that Baphomet represents the severed head of John the Baptist. Ooh. Yep. During the trials, one of the knights, Guillermo de Albi, testified that he had seen Baphomet twice and described it as being a bearded head constructed of wood and silver. Yeah, but he was the one who was going to be taught. Well, so many of them were tortured. That could have been just somebody confessing in order to stop being tortured, or to avoid torture. Other charges leveled against the Templars, including the demon worship, kissing the anuses of cats, and homosexuality. Those accusations of heresy have been first leveled against the Cathars in the Languedoc a century before, previously, a century previously, by the Dominican monks who undertook the fearsome Inquisition. Charges of heresy also extended to the relationship that the Templars had with the fearsome assassins. The Elite Order of Muslim Warriors it is believed that the Assassins provided the Templars with occult knowledge, which they went, then went on to form the basis of the teachings of both Masonry and Rosicrucianism. Alright, Knights Templar. Or Knights Templar. The Templars really were victims of betrayal and greed. Philippe IV, I wonder, did you pay for your sins? The Order of Born at the Four Knights of Christ and the Temple of Solomon, the Knights Templar, was founded in 1120. For a period of 200 years, the Order became the most powerful and most secretive organization in history. I mean, no. If there is a more secretive organization, then we don't know about them. Still, the Temple was quickly built in enormous wealth. Kings of Europe came to them, kept in hand to negotiate loans. They created many fundamental aspects of today's international banking system, like the banknote and letters of credit. Yet, faithful to their solemn sworn vows of poverty, the individual members of the secret society were penniless. But when the Knights Templar was destroyed in the, 14, in the 14th century, their incredible riches, as well as their fabled great secret, vanished into thin air, to escape persecution by King Philip IV of France. The Templar's treasure, and their enormous fleet, or La Rochelle, La Rochelle, simply disappeared. To this date, his whereabouts has never been discovered. The end of the Templars was signified by the execution of their last Grand Master, Jacques de Molay, who was burnt alive before a chanting wall in Paris 1314, and the distribution of their lands to the Knights Hospital. Yeah. <clears throat> but some historians believe they simply changed their name and went underground. Evidence is even inside of Link's famous figures of more recent history of the Order, hundreds of years after it officially seems to be Leonardo da Vinci is named as one, to Isaac Newton another. Great explorer Vasco da Gama journeyed with the Temple of Cross Insignia on his sails, as did Christopher Columbus. Evidence also suggests that the Templars discovered America some 80 years before Columbus. Some maintain that the Order of Knights Templar are still in existence today, though under another name. Throughout Europe, its members were still known to meet secretly to discuss unknown business, in you know, arcane rituals, and plot our destiny behind closed doors. Alright, let's click on Great Secret. Knights Templars own many fabled religious treasures, including, it is said, the crown of thorns worn by Jesus as he perished on the cross. Also in the possession of mysterious Great Secret. Some believe this to have been the most revered of all Christian relics, the Holy Grail. Others believe that the Great Secret. Others believe that the Great Secret may have been a particular knowledge which, if revealed, would undermine the fundamental view of Christianity itself. Given that this is called Angel of Death, that might very well be what's going on here. 
Philippe IV. Or Even Philippe. by medieval standards, Philippe IV was a ruthless, vain dictator. His puppet, Clement V, was no better. Philippe IV, son of Philippe III, was born in oh, Fontainebleau in 1268 and crowned king in 1285, known as La Belle the Fair. <laughs> if you have to be called the democratic or the just or something like that, odds are you are not. Philippe was a vain and highly ambitious man. Philippe, Philippe, ah, Philippe aggressively extended his kingdom, including seizing lands around Bordeaux from Edward I of England, before centralizing his government and established a structure of legists, politicians appointed by the king who were of who were not of noble birth and who were wholly loyal to Philippe. 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 It was this structure of legists that allowed Philippe to maintain to manipulate the papacy and support this conflict with the legitimate Roman Catholic Pope. Uh, Boniface VIII, which grew out of a king's attempt to levy taxes on the church. In response, Boniface issued a papal bull, Uno Sanctum, declaring papal supremacy and forbidding the clergy to pay taxes to the crown. On the death of Boniface in Boniface VIII in 1305, which many suspected was orchestrated by the king. Feeling Philippe, uh, Philip maintained, manipulated and followed many cardinals in Rome to appoint his pontiff, his puppet, Bert. Bert de Molay was arrested, charged with heresy, and burned in 1314, but not before laying a curse on both Philippe and Clement V. Both died later that year. The Pope from a sudden heart attack of dysentery, no, the Pope from a sudden heart from a sudden attack of dysentery, sorry, not a heart attack. Well, no, I should have. I don't know why I added in the word heart there, but there we go. The king in a hunting accident. His fortune sought the kings of France there, thereafter, culminating 500 years later after de Molay's death in the French Revolution and the decapitation of Louis XVI at the guillotine. Legend has it that. A man jumped onto the guillotine, dipped his fingers in the king's blood, and shouted, Jacques de Molay, you are avenged. I didn't see anything else over here, did I? No. Alright, so let's look at Clement the Seventh. Clement the Fifth was the just fifth. a puppet seventh. of the king. Wow. Did you know popes used to be regularly attacked by mobs in those days? Huh. Can't say I'm surprised. As Napoleon said, history is written by the victors. Bertrand. I think that the holy man on the right of the manuscript could be Clement V. He was Pope of Avignon and Philip's crony. But he can't be the true patriarch referred to in the manuscript. So we just need to work out who is the true patriarch. Bertrand de Gaulle was elected Pope in 1305 and took on the name of Clement V. Clement was the first Pope to be based in Avignon. Indeed, he never visited Rome. Absolutely servile to King Philippe. The Fourth of France, he was happy to bless the king for having attacked his predecessor, Boniface VIII, and supported Philippe in his persecution of the Knights Templar. Most of Clement's cardinals were relatives, and so corrupt and nepotistic was he that when he died, they inherited so much wealth that the papacy was almost bankrupted. Uh, okay, no, we did the fourth, uh, we've done the Knights Templar, we done Clement, we haven't done Jacques de Molay. Jacques de Molay was... Jacques de Molay oh. was cynically betrayed by Philippe IV of France. Jacques de Molay was initi initiated into the United Templar in 1265. At the age of 21, and quickly rose through the ranks. He was initially based in Britain, where his positions included that of Visitor General before being appointed Grand Preceptor of all England. In 1291, de Molay fought bravely to defend I would say Acre, but that's not a Cree a last city in the Holy Lands or Utrimer under Christian control, but was overwhelmed by Mamluk forces. Mamluks were professional soldiers of slave origin. 
the fall of Acre was humiliating for the Christians, representing the culmination of a steady decline in Christian influence in the Holy Lands since the disastrous loss of Jerusalem to the brilliant Muslim general Saladin in 1187. Recapturing the Holy Lands, and Jerusalem in particular, from the Muslim armies was de Molay's obsession. With the death of Theobald Gordon in 1292, de Molay was installed as the 23rd and last Grand Master, moving his base to the islands of Cyprus. Oh, Cyprus. Cyprus. I was thinking of Cypriot. Anyway, uh, de Molay immediately drew out a plan to recapture Atruma. He forged an alliance with the Mongols of Persia with limited success. In September 1302, the final foothold in the Holy Lands was lost when the island of Ruad or Arwad, was attacked by Muslim forces and the Christian garrison, which was trapped by the island, trapped on the island, was massacred. Ruling over an almost bankrupt kingdom, the French king Philip IV covered the wealth of the order coveted. Oh, me. Reading out loud. Not good. When the Templars received much of the blame for the loss of the Holy Lands, he hatched an audacious plan to discredit them and seize possession. Seize their possessions. Their treasures held at the common libraries, their extensive land, their fleet, which was the largest in Europe, and of particular interest, their arcane secret. In the autumn of 1307, Philippe IV summoned to Malay to France on Friday the 13th, which is where we get the Friday the 13th is bad luck superstition from. On Friday the 13th, October 1307, the king's deputy struck, swooping down on the Templars' camaraderies, uh, arresting all of the members of the order and seizing their assets. De Malay was arrested in March 1314 and was burned at the Isle de Paris. Hmm. I mean, we've seen the secret. That's uh, Philippe. Philippe, okay. We've done Knights Templar, we've done Jacques de Molay was avenged, we've done Clement, we've done Continued, Knights Templar, Great Secret, Philippe, Jacques, we've done you, Knights Hospital, so we haven't looked at that. Time to say, nope, the Order of the Hospital, the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem was founded in the 11th century by Blessed Gerard, building hospitals monastic brothers tended the sick in the Holy Lands during the First Crusade to both the Christians and their enemies. Their role gradually expanded to include combat, and they quickly became, along with the Knights Templar, a, ho a highly organized and skillful, skillful military force in the Holy Lands. With the loss of the Holy Lands, the Hospitaller Hospitalers moved their base to Rhodes, where they from where they found themselves in a continual war with the Turks, when the Templars were destroyed by Philip. Philip. Oh my god. When they were destroyed by King. King 4. King 4.0. I'm trying to think of the fourth film. King Resurrection. Anyway. The lands were passed to the Hospitaliers. Their great military roles. Roads finally fell to the Turks in 1502, and the order moved to Malta, where they flourished until the capture of the island by Napoleon in 1798. Pleas of the Pope and the Monarch of Europe for help went unanswered. Well, there we go. Uh, we done the Knights. Is that all of those? Okay. Knights Templar, John the Baptiste, we haven't looked at yet. I think that's the only one left. Nothing? John the Baptiste Canon is an enigmatic character that was revered by the Templars. Evidence from the apocryphal gospels have led to some suggest some to suggest that Jesus, who was born in seven seven BC, competed with the, his brother James, who was actually born in zero AD, for the rightful claim to being the true Messiah. Although John the Baptist did baptize Jesus in the River of Jordan, it is suggested that he supported James rather than Jesus. Some have even suggested that John the Baptist and James are actually the same person. Oh. The Dead Sea Scrolls indicate that prior to the birth of Christ, it had been widely prophesied that the Messiah would be born who would lead the Jewish people to freedom. Desperate for such a Messiah, the people welcomed Jesus when he announced himself. Jesus knew what he had to do to fulfill the prophecies. He selected twelve apostles and began to preach. His actions threatened Herod Antipas. Herod. Herod. Yes. 
a Jewish leader appointed by the Romans, as well as the Romans. Oh, he threatened the Jewish leader appointed by the Romans, as well as the Romans themselves and the Pharisees. At the same time, John the Baptist had criticized Herod, the governor of Galilee, uh, Galilee for marrying Herodus, the divorced wife of his half brother, also called Herod. John the Baptist was promptly arrested, infuriated by the criticism of Herod Herodotus. Herod, hmm, that guy, inspired with her daughter, or that girl, oh, yes. Inspired with her daughter, who demanded that John the Baptist's head be brought to her. John the Baptist was beheaded and his head delivered. Oh, is this, um, Salme, who kissed the head and danced around? After the death of John the Baptist, many. John the Baptist, many of his followers, switched allegiances and supported Jesus' claim as Messiah. The temple has possessed many holy relics. Perhaps the head of John the Baptist is one such artifact, and that the head was before it, the personification of wisdom. Certainly the Templars celebrated his feast day. Uh, there's Templars. We've seen that already, haven't we? Great Secret, Knight the Templar. There's the one with Secret. With just secret. No, was it you? No. Yeah, secret. No, that's the great secret. All right, okay. I think we've seen everything that you have on this website of yours. Oh, historical databases. Let's connect again. Oh, so I can't go back there then. All right, okay. I think I'm done. Anna Maria, can you spare a moment? What do you need, George? Oh. That meatpacking place is pretty shady. It's a real factory, huh? It is. But take my advice, never eat a Martino salami. Is that it? Okay. So here we go. And transfer suit, historical database, welcome note, format, welcome notes. We've seen that. Format, that's Templar, John the Baptiste. I think we've seen everything here then. If we look at the manuscript, are you going to give us more information now? It reads The Last, to see the light. Mm. Turn from Holy Sion to face the great fortress of the Empire of the East, the seat of the Holy Church in the West, the learned Coptic city to the south. Look at that holy man. Clement the fifth, certainly not the true patriarch. Uh, it's got to be Philip. Like, yeah. Philip the fourth of France, the medieval city of Paris. St. George fighting a dragon. If Clement V is not the true patriarch, and St. George, who came from Turkey, is fighting a dragon below the city of a holy man who is the true patriarch, yes, then the city must be Istanbul, which was known as Constantinople in medieval times. And the fortress must be a reference to the old citadel of Constantinople. Oh. George, that's amazing. Does it still exist? I don't know, but I bet someone in Istanbul would. George, you are brilliant. Thank you so much for helping me. You're paying me yeah, ten grand fun. right now. I'd never turn down the chance to search for Templar treasure. It's Baphomet, the idol that the Templars were accused of worshipping. All right, well, you're going to update this? Constantinople. Right, you're just going to say Fortified City and Holy Man. All right. Well then, I think we are off on adventures abroad. But that will not happen until tomorrow. Yeah, research manuscript still. All right. No. 
Yes, that will not happen until tomorrow. Because uh, it has been about three hours, just shy, so we were going to stop here for the day. And I will be back tomorrow at the same time, ready to do more exciting things. So, I have been Richard. This has been LM, TD, TM, FFR, or, say it with me now, limited time offer, no vowels. Vowels. That is, not consonants, not vowels, but vowels. Thank you very much for all being here, and I will see you all tomorrow.